Hi everybody, this is Audrey, also known as Noble Strength, and welcome to my channel, and you are tuned in for Devotion Time. So if you like being encouraged and uplifted through the Word of God, then stick around. Today's topic is praising God, and I think as long as we have breath in our bodies, that is what we should be doing. We should be giving praise. So let's take a deeper look into what it means to praise God by first defining what praise is and then digging into scripture to see what God has to say about praise. Praise, the expression of approval or admiration for someone or something to express warm approval or admiration of. Now, praise comes from a Latin word meaning value or price. Thus, to give praise to God is to proclaim his merit or worth. So, you know, we often think about praise in the sense of when we praise someone when they do a good job or, you know, when we praise our children for doing something that is right and decent and good. And think about that. Praise is usually given when it's related to something good that delights you and makes you, you know, joyful and uplifted. And remember, all good things come from God. There is no good in us that did not come from him. So really and truly, when we're praising someone else, we're actually praising God because God created that individual and he is, you know, over everything that is good. So I want to really take a look at some scriptures about praise. And the only reason why I mentioned about how we praise people and praise others, I know oftentimes when we're being praised, there's this little tinge inside of us that's like, oh, don't do that. But when praise is done in the right way and in the right perspective, there's nothing wrong with it. And there is a good way to praise people, but we should always be praising God. When we're praising people, it should be done from a place of sincerity and from a place of just delight in something truly, truly good. And there should be no other ill intent behind it, like any type of gain or anything of that. It should not be any um, deceitfulness behind it, like flattering words, etc. But I really want to focus on praising God and not individual. Let's take a look at Psalm 150. David, he truly knew what it meant to praise, you know, God. And so that's why I want to look at Psalm. The, the whole entire book of Psalm is really a message of praise to God. But I want to read Psalm 150 first, and then we'll go on from there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know what? You know that was the inspired word of God. When you read it, it just brings you joy. When you read it, you just have life in you. So I really want you to later on after this video to go back and read this verse again and really let it get down into your spirit because David is actually telling us where we should praise him, how we should praise him, and, and, and what manner and what things we can praise God with. It is so amazing that we have the word of God. It just instructs us in every manner. And so ultimately, we are to praise God in everything. And that is something that is resounded over and over throughout scripture. And we're going to take a look at a few more scriptures about praising God. In all praise of men and things, there should be an implicit praise to God. And that is something that I drew from my study and just kind of looking up some commentary online about praise in preparation for this video. And I want to read that again because that statement was really profound to me. In all praise of men and things, there should be an implicit praise to God, which goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Whenever you're praising someone about something, maybe a gift that they have, ultimately, who gave that person that gift? God did. So you're actually 
there's an implied praise to God in the process. So when you're doing it and you're meaning it from sincerity, maybe you're praising someone for their gift of song. Oh, you really did an awesome job singing today. That just moved me so greatly. You're so awesome at what you do. And that may make the other person feel a certain way, but ultimately that person is actually praising God for the gift that they see in that individual. So as long as you don't go overboard in that praise of that, you know, gift or that admiration that you're praising that person for, it's okay to give someone praise because ultimately God is the one being praised. I want to read uh, James 1.17. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So when we're giving God praise, that's not changing who he is. That's actually just giving him what he is due. Remember we said that praise is about uh, showing one's value and worth. We're just saying, God, you are worthy. God, I value you. I value you know, the gift that you've given me, the gift of life and all the goodness that is in my life. I praise you, God. So it doesn't change God, but it definitely can change us as individuals. It can make us appreciate life better. It can take us away from a negative frame of mind to a positive frame of mind. And yesterday, I was just overjoyed with the goodness of the Lord. And I'm always thankful and grateful. But you know, you have those moments where you feel God's presence and you just want to shout and praise him and give him the highest praise. Hallelujah, God, for all you've done for me, all the goodness. And you know, I received some not so good news uh, on Sunday morning. My mom called me and said that my Aunt Laura had passed away. And here is a woman that I admire so much and just loved her dearly. She was 93 years old, so she lived a wonderful and good life. And that was something to praise God about. But in my humanness, of course, I was a bit sad because I'm going to miss her. So, yeah, but she just, she really lived a good life. She traveled, she entertained, she showed hospitality. She opened up her home throughout the year. She's just a really good woman and she will be greatly missed. But you know what? Through it all, I give God's praise. I give him praise for the times that I shared with her, the, the gift that she gave me of loving to play Scrabble and listen to jazz and just, you know, exposure to things that I might not have been exposed to. And I'm sorry about, you know, the expression, but this is just raw um, emotion that you're seeing here. Uh, in regards to my aunt passing away. So, you know, this is a week of Thanksgiving and praise and I was looking forward to going to spend time with my in-laws and fellowshipping with them and just thanking God and eating and all of that. But now things have changed. I'll be going to Memphis uh, to be with my mom because that was her last remaining sister and she does have uh, three brothers left. So it's just going to be a time of, you know, grieving, but at the same time, a time of rejoicing because she is with our Heavenly Father. She is with God. So um, back to the lesson. Um, so we want to praise God in all things. Even when things are not so, you know, pleasant, we can still give praise to God for his goodness because he's sovereign and he knows what's best now I want to read to you 1 Corinthians 4, 7. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? So what this verse is saying that you know, we're all creations of God and everything about us is a miracle and a gift from God. And so we can boast in nothing of ourselves, you know, in and of ourselves, but all boasting should be about God. And there's scripture to support that as well. And um, 
I also will be including some links to some articles that I read that I think are very good supplements to our discussion of devotion today. And one of them is an article by John Piper, and it's titled, How Do You Handle Compliments? And then there is another one that um, I want to link below, and it is called, Do Not Depart, Jesus' Pattern of Giving Thanks. And I think those are really two good articles that were written. They have good commentary that tie in uh, into what it means to praise God. All right. Also, I want to read 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I underline the will because as a child of God, as a born again believer, we desire to be in God's will. And this scripture specifically tells us what one of those wills of God is because there are many things that are in the will of God. Whatever his word says, we are to be in obedience to. And specifically, this is in God's will. It says, rejoice always, not sometimes, but always, and you may ask, how can I continuously be rejoicing always, even when things are not good or down? It's a frame of mind and being. That's why we need to be in God's word daily. We need to be communing with him daily. We can talk to God wherever we are, you know, about every situation and every circumstance. That is what's so wonderful about Jesus coming down and, you know, living among men and dying, willingly giving his life for us, because now we can come before the holies of holies and, you know, make our proclaims about how good he is known and, and just make, you know, professions to him about our love for him and just ask, you know, for requests about various things. And it's all because of God. And that alone, to me, is a way that we can rejoice and continually uh, give praise. And it says, pray continually. And so praying is just a way of communicating to God. And we can do that in our spirit. It doesn't have to be allowed all the times. Though at times I prefer when I'm in my closet or in my own little space to just pray out loud because the words help me to keep my mind from wandering and being distracted. Sometimes when I'm praying silently, my mind wanders and praying aloud is a way for me to truly be focused on talking to God. So rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now I want to read Let's see here. One last verse, Psalm 34, 1. And this is the ending of Psalm 34, 1. I will bless the Lord all times. His praise shall be continuously, his praise shall continuously, excuse me, be in my mouth. Let me read that again. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Like I said earlier, David truly understood what it meant to praise the Lord and how to praise God. And, um, and like he said, continuously. So what I want to say uh, in ending is that praising God is something that we owe him and that he deserves because he is worthy but it benefits us in our spirit, in our growth uh, as individuals. And one of the ways that I, you know, try to be mindful of praising God is just by reading his word. So make sure that you take time out of your day, whether it be early in the morning or right before you go to bed. I try to do both so that I can set my mind, like it's like a compass, setting your direction for how you're gonna be thinking for the day and then going to sleep with him on your mind so that you can have a peaceful rest at night. And, you know, praising God gives you joy and it gives you peace. And I wanna read some scriptures, my two favorite verses. My, uh, I love Philippians 4, six through eight. 
Um, those are my favorite scriptures. I try to keep them in the forefront of my mind because it keeps me in a positive frame of mind. So, and it, I think it also goes into praising God. So let's read that. Philippians 4, 6 through 8, or through 9, I should say. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we can see that when we're talking to God and, and bringing our prayers before him, it is with thanksgiving, which is a form of praise. And with that comes peace. And who doesn't want peace? Let's continue. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things that which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Once again, you know, Paul is telling us that ways that we can have God's peace, giving him thanks, thinking on those things which are good and who's good. God is good. There's Jesus even said it himself. There is only one who is good. And that is God, the father. You know, he is our perfect example. Je Jesus Christ is our perfect example. And he gave God thanks continuously and pointed to the Father continuously, even on the cross up until the end. So I just wanted to share that with you today. I think um, this is very fitting for this Thanksgiving season. Just remember to be praising God in all things and through all circumstances, no matter what they are. So I would love to close with prayer. Yeah, let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, almighty and righteous God, sovereign God, the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have given us, all that you've bestowed upon us, all that you've endowed us with, Lord, our gifts. Lord God, we just give you praise and thanks for it. And we give you thanks for meeting all of our needs father god sometimes we take those needs for granted but we don't mean to lord for so forgive us for that lord thank you for clean running water a roof over our head clothes on our back food in our stomach thank you lord god for your goodness thank you for sending your son uh your one and only son to die for our sins we just thank you for the blood father we just give you praise for our family for our friends for our acquaintances people that you've brought into our lives briefly or whether they're still with us or not we just give you praise for them lord because everyone who we cross paths with you brought into our lives for a reason so we thank you for that lord god we thank you for this season of thanksgiving lord god but let it not just be for a season let it be continuously lord god let our praise be let your praise father god be continuously in our mouths and we just give you thanks for everything on heaven and in earth and we ask all of these things that you be with us and just help us continuously to look to you for strength for guidance for instruction for goodness lord help us to um, be mindful of what we speak out lord god and just let it be a praise father god in honor of you in jesus name amen so thank you once again for tuning in for this devotion time. I love you guys. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. You'll see me again after Thanksgiving. Um, but comment below um, if you are so led. Share with me any scriptures that um, go along with this devotion of giving praise to God. I love you all and I'll see you next time. And remember to be a good steward of all that God has given you because he truly loves us so much. Bye. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name, Selah. Worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created.